Peace and love, family. How you guys doing today? Let's go for a quick walk. Huh? Let's go for a walk. A lot of stuff that I want to talk about today. A lot of different things been going on. Well, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff been going on lately. A lot of growth been happening lately. Um, but growth from experience. Growth from experience. Last night, last night was a beautiful night. Last night, I don't know. I think I had a, an experience. Something I learned from in a beautiful way. And I think it's something to really grow on and think about. Because last time I realized something that I kind of haven't realized yet in this journey. It's like, <laughs> when you grow, right, you're making positive steps for growth your whole entire life, right? You're becoming certain things for certain people and certain things for other people all the time within your life. And relationships and versions of you, everything is being redefined and changed up. And the perspectives on you are being redefined and changed up as well because certain people at certain times needed you for thir certain things, right? You were, your presence at certain times for certain people was important while you were in that mindset at that time. And what you were able to give people at that time, whether you knew it or not, was something that they needed a lot of the times, right? You were able to give them something that was individual to that person. And the bond that you shared within that time frame made so much of a difference when it came to who you were actually. That's what I think about now, which is like a funny thing. It's like in my life, I've been many different things for many different people. There's some foundational root things that were always the same. By the way, get grounded. There are some foundational root things that were always the same. But there are other things that constantly were being redefined and changed as I was growing. As I was changing in my life. So it couldn't help but do the same thing for the relations and the people that were around me. Now, why do I say this and why do I speak about this? That you never will know and fully understand how profound you might have been at certain times in your life until you get out of those times and you relive them with people sometimes. And when I say that, it's not, it's not like, as a way to, it's not an ego speak for me, it's the ego speak for everyone. Because you never know, like a lot of us, within our lives, we don't like to give ourselves credit for things, right? We don't like to give ourselves credit for growth. We don't like to give ourselves credit for making steps forward. We don't like to give ourselves credit. A lot of us don't like to give ourselves credit for anything that we do that's positive, right? And it's a sad, it's a sad state of affairs, I, you could say, but it's because a lot of us hold ourselves to this, <laughs> We hold ourselves to this measuring stick all the time. Now, in some ways, the measuring stick is amazing. That's the only way that I can make sure that I stay on my path, right? I can only stay on my path if there's sometimes a defined area to walk, like right now, right? I have, there's a definite path that I can walk on that's gonna help me get to my destination. And I gotta make sure that I follow this path the best I can, right? Yeah, but that being said, there's still not a way for me to get somewhere by going this way. Facts, I could get somewhere going that way. Same thing with this way. 
right? By far, what I'm doing, my journey, might be along this path here. Now, how do I say this? It was because you met a bunch of people in your life along different versions of your life. Right? You met them all on different versions of your path, on different parts of the path. And they walked with you for a lot of times in certain parts. And yo, it was amazing. Rocked with me last night. Like, we used to go out all the time, man. We used to, like, we used to go out all the time. He used to live in the city. Like, like, he was like, oh, this is all prepubescent, right? So since, that, since I was prepubescent, man, this is like one of my things. Drunk, we were going out. Dude, always having a great time, yo. Literally. So we both were open, like, with each other. We were both open to have fun. Like, I mean, you ever be around some people sometimes you can't have fun with them? I feel like they're judging you. I feel like that all this time, there was never this, right? So when I look at it, like, yeah, it was everything healthy all the time? Nah, nah, nah. Drinking all that liquor, doing all that stuff. That's not really a healthy thing to do all the time. But when it comes to what it meant, did it mean something a lot bigger in the time period, in the time frames when it was going on? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Right? I met a lot of people through those experiences. I learned about, a lot about myself through those experiences. How you doing? Good, how are you? I learned a lot about myself through those experiences. And that's what was able to help me grow to where I am today. With being able to experience these parts of myself and put them in perspective properly. But I would never be able to know unless I experienced. That's why you see this trouble between religion and spirituality. Because there's some people that get through a religious program, completely scared away from experiencing any parts of their life or any parts of themselves. And they shut themselves off to these parts to understand how to be relatable. And your goal, well, look at these birds. Do you see them? Can you see the birds? Uh huh. Can you see the birds? In this? Let's see. Yeah, look at all of them. Right? But can you be relatable? Because it's all about relating to people and relating to parts of yourself that you want to relate to. That's a big thing in life. Is to be able to relate. And sometimes, once you can get in a place where you're more relatable, people can understand and accept your message more. I, last night, I was around people, and I was like, fine, I had like breakthroughs with people. Like, first, first times in my whole entire life, that's I talked to, I've been talking to some people about certain things for a while, but I finally was able to have a breakthrough with them last night. Because I was in an environment that was relatable to them. Now, as far as me, like, I drank wine for the, red wine for the first time. I drank, I've drank at all, anything, in like two and a half years. And it was funny, just the act of me drinking around people. They know I don't drink. They don't do any of these things anymore. It allowed people to open up to me. Now, it's not something that I'm going to partake in more, do anything like that. But it's something that I realized, like, in that moment, I was able to sh completely share the experience with them. And it made everyone in the area more open to who I was. And what I was saying. 
Well, it's a weird thing to think about. Now I can think about it in two ways. And this is the way you can view all this kind of stuff. By the way, see those lines in the sky? Oh, we got to get out of here, reflection. Uh, let me get into what. <clears throat> anyway. There's two ways you can look at these things. Um, one, you can look at it from a place that is beautiful for you to be able to get into a space of relatability with people. And that when you can let your guard down, sometimes you can open up a whole different realm of possibility for you and someone else. Now that's one thing that was beautiful. Because in me taking myself down for a little bit, in me just easing on myself, because again, out of all the things I could have done, dude, I didn't eat any meat, I was eating any dairy, I wasn't doing anything karmically wrong. I was just having some red wine. Again, is red wine the most conducive? No. Is that still like not really the highest vibrational thing? Facts, yeah, truth. Truth, truth, truth. But what I was able to experience and gather was worth it on the transmutation end. Now on the other end, there was an obsession with people wanting me to drink more. <laughs> wanting me to go out and start drinking more with them. Right? Now that's where you have to, again, use your, use your mental fortitude and your understanding and say, yo, I can't get into this type of situation too often because my path is, again is still the same path. Hi. Hello. My path is still the same path. Hey. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so, all I can do is just go about my business and do the best that I can. Right? But I have to know for myself where I'm at. How you doing today, sir? I can just know what I'm doing. Now, everyone's path is different, right? Everyone's path is different and along other people's paths, I may be able to stop in and give them something because our paths may line up at certain extents, right? But you always gotta remember what your path is and be organic to that. Be organic and true to your path. Know that, again, you can experience things, right? Because that's what this plane is about. This plane is about experience and what you can gather from your experience, what you, I can become aware of because of my experience. And once I can become aware of things because of my experience, I can grow as an individual. And once I can see different parts of myself and understand different parts of myself to the purest, fullest intent, I can start to let go, right? I want to let go. I want to let go of the nature of me that still has to feel like it has to judge and define. Because that just tells me that the more that I judge others and their experience, I haven't fully experienced or understood mine just yet. And you see that a lot with people trying to get over these things in their life. Because they haven't fully yet come to grips with their experience just yet, right? They haven't fully understand their experience just yet. They still find themselves in places where they hold these grudges. They hold these attachments to separation. They hold these attachments to illusion. They hold these attachments to these judgments on things. And I can't say that I haven't been someone who's fallen for that. Because I have been everyone knows that at their part parts of your journey when you're starting to learn what's right and what's wrong because there are rights and wrongs there are truths and untruths that's something that we have to start to break a spell with right the notion of can and should right like diet can you eat meat as a human being yes you can do it there's ways that you can, yeah. 
but should you? That's the real question. Right? Should you is the real question. Can and should. Now, could you and can you just limit yourself off to the whole entire world and lock yourself in a box? Yeah, you can. You can hold yourself away from everything. You can keep yourself away from all all earthly things, right? You can hold yourself away, but should you always? That's the key. And that's the question. What is the shoulds? Not the could. That's the shoulds. Because you've given, you got in your life, you've been given every excuse to close yourself off from things. All day. All the time. If you, like, just look at it, drinking. I, every person has brought, most of all, most people who've ever drank have gotten so drunk to the point that they throw up and they get sick as shit. Now, technically, you could have been given everything you needed to close off that chapter of your life. Never touch it again. But the problem that people have is, should they? Same thing with everything that goes on. It's the coulds and the shoulds. People have always been given every excuse and right to separate yourself from things more. I look at this when I look at a lot of the activism that goes on today. A lot of the activism that goes on today has nothing to do with bringing people together. And people will never understand me a lot of times when I say that. Because there's clearly a point to this activism where it's just as separational as what these people are trying to fight against. Because it's not a unifying thing. You look at this, you look at a famous KRS-One speech, one of my favorites where he breaks down the, the fallacy of white supremacy, the fallacy of black supremacy as what we see it. That we think of a KKK member as a white supremacist instead of thinking of a white guru or a white hippie, someone who loves all things and is accepting of all things. That's a supreme white being, right? or a supreme melanated being will be someone, again, accepting of all things, understanding their connection to all things. That's what makes you supreme because that's what the hard thing is. I was just having conversations with a couple students recently. They were saying they go to schools, they have all these activist clubs and things like that. And it's so easy to join these th these clubs. And when they get into these clubs, they sit down and all these people are doing is bashing people who think opposite of them. Hi. Are bashing people who think opposite of them. Now, what is the nature of that? What is the nature of that? Is that how we're supposed to be making steps forward within this society? Huh? Hi. Is that how we're supposed to be making steps forward? <laughs> or is it in the accepting of things? We got a little, we got a dog walking with me. <laughs> He's chilling. Right? 
I don't know. Only you can judge that. Right? Only you can judge that. But that's why growth and understanding is the tough one. Growth and understanding is the tough thing to grasp. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be. The self-actualized self is something that's, that's trying to be attained constantly. But to get there is not the most the most paved, we'll say. Right? It's not the most open and easiest to find. Because if it would, everyone would do it. But the thing that we all have to start to understand more is that your version of the self actualized you may just be completely different than someone else's version of the self-actualized them. And once we as a people can start to accept that self-actualization is different depending on your path, on where, what your journey is specifically to you, there are some people who no matter what <laughs> this is when we talk some people try and get biblically to talk to the prophet of Isaiah right they'll listen but they'll not hear they'll see but they won't see <clears throat> there's differences So what's the version of you? Hmm. Hmm. Look at all these berries. But we were having a conversation last night. I was speaking with someone, they recently gave up meat. They're on their vegetarian step. Kudos to them. Talking about it, they're having problems. problems with how they have to explain themselves all the time. I feel the explanation game. I'm always having to explain to everyone why they eat the way that they do. You know, this field, these fields are breathtaking though. But anyway. And I told them that in this world can't attach yourself to the opinion of what someone else has. You can't attach yourself to the thought of how someone should receive something. How are you guys doing? Because that's what we get into trouble with as a society today. Or as someone who's a quote unquote light worker or any of these things. We attach ourselves to the thought and the notion that when we tell people certain things, they should react a certain way, or that they'll even understand. Never attach yourself to an outcome. Oh, 
How you doing? You <laughs> never attach yourself to an outcome. You should only attach yourself to truth and share. That's what I had to stop doing. I, I came to a point in my life where all I was doing was trying to teach people and I'd be so upset. I'd be so upset when I felt like they wouldn't understand me, or they wouldn't listen. And I was giving them all I could to help them. I was giving them everything I could, right? All the information, I'm sharing it. I'm spending hours talking to people about things. Hours just, here, let me talk to you through this. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about that. This is what I learned. This is what you can do for this and that. It became exhausting, right? It became so exhausting. Until I got to the point where, fuck it, I don't care anymore. All I can do is tell you. All I can do is show you. All I can do is, is place the information and place everything in the best way possible. Give it to you, raw, uncut, no filter, everything. Give it to you exactly the way that I got it. And once I do that, whatever you choose to do with it, that's on you. But I can not I can only hold myself to the accountability that I gave it to you. That's all I can do. I can only just rest assured that I did my part. And know that on your journey, there's only, there might be only a little bit of the information that you were able to take in and that you could apply. But I planted the seeds so maybe in the future, someone else can come and re revamp some of the other things and put it in a way that you can get that information. Right, but it's all about keeping the subconscious mind awake. Right? It's all about being around people that keep your subconscious mind in a state of of growth. Like cause there's plenty of ways and things and ways that our subconscious mind is just out here. Right? Just out here experiencing, but not really growing. That our subconscious mind gets put to sleep or it becomes in friction with itself. You see that all over the place. But that's okay. Right? That's okay. That doesn't mean that you stop. All you can do is what you're doing. All I can do is continue to do what I'm doing. Continue to be the most authentic version of me. The most full, true version of me. And express all this knowledge that I have in the best way that I possibly can. Right? Now, is that saying that in every single moment, you're going to be an A-plus student? Is every single student always an A-plus student all the time? Does anyone, does everyone ever have parts of their schooling that they struggle with more than others? Yes, facts. Facts, we all have that. Like we all have parts of ourselves and parts of our journey that we struggle with far more than others. But that's okay. That's okay. That's inherent in the nature of growth. In the nature of growth, there are signs where you grow through growth periods that are tougher than others. Because that just shows you that there are parts of you that are a little bit more fine-tuned and concrete than you thought, right? There are parts of you that are a little bit more stubborn than you thought. And you, you realize that, that with the people around you all the time, you can't say that you don't. You see that there are some people in your life that are stubborn, right? There's some parts of you that are stubborn. But that's just like an inherent nature of you. You have things in, within inside of you that are expressed through you <laughs> that are harder to get rid of than others, right? Like look at the Babylon system. That's why this system is the way it is because there's so many things and levels. There's levels to these devils, right? There's so many different ways and things that you have to be doing. 
at overcoming. And sometimes overcoming isn't just as easy as seeing and knowing it. Well, I still deal with sometimes people's perspective of me. Sometimes I'm still like getting caught up in what people perceive me as, right? Because I know a lot about myself, right? And when you know a lot about yourself and you handle yourself in a certain way, you always have to know that's gonna make people uncomfortable. For example, yesterday in the morning, I was dealing with the person that I used to be around a lot in my lower self, right? Now this person always is telling me to cut my beard. Always tell me to cut my beard, cut my beard, cut your beard. Last three times I've seen him, every single time. When are you gonna cut your beard? So yesterday I kind of got at him. I'm not gonna fucking cut my beard. He got upset. He got defensive with me. So well, I'm just trying to help you. And I had to think, cutting my beard to help me do what? What is cutting my beard gonna help me with? Is that gonna help me get a better understanding of self? Is that gonna help me with acceptance and love of self? Hmm? What is cutting of my beard helping me do as a person that I'm not achieving with my beard? And that's when you gotta check people's value systems because some people hold value in the way they look, but not in the way they look organically and the way they look in comparison or in the aspects of this reality, the matrix, right? The place where you have to deny yourself of yourself all the time, right? The place where I can't walk around and take these off, right? This is my natural body as well. I was born with, right? But if I took this off, I'm indecent. But if I show you my body like this, some people will tell me I'm sexy. But they'll call me indecent when I'm naked. But that was me, naturally. I didn't do anything to myself. I don't have fuck you written up, down on my genitals. My genitals are just that way. Why are they indecent for just being natural? Does a dog feel ashamed of its balls? No. Dog's out here licking his balls. And people would be like, that's gross, that's animalistic. Is it? Is it? Who told you that? Who told you that the Native Americans were living here were savages, but the people who came over here with smallpox blankets and guns weren't? Who gave you these notions? And what do they do? Do they yield anything positive? Are they leading to your growth? These are questions to ask. Well, there are questions to ask. So how, no one can help you. You must help yourself. Right? Someone can spark you. Yeah. Someone can show you. Okay but no one can help you because help always has to be accepted, right? So if help always has to be accepted, you're always helping yourself. No one is helping you, right? I can know what a healthy diet is, right? I can know exactly what to eat. I can know what I, I can know exactly what is the food combination to make it sure that I live forever. I can know that. But there's another thing to accept that and apply that. It's a whole nother thing. 
And it's once that's what we start to vibrate to. Once you start to tap into that understanding, you see the differences. You see the life change. You see the real growth. Look at them trying to spray. Look at all this spray, right? But you have to become in tune with that part of you, the most organic self. <laughs>